Breaking news here on CBS Sports HQ. The NBA has suspended Draymond Green indefinitely after hitting Phoenix's Yusuf Nurkic in the head during Tuesday night's game. The league says the suspension will begin immediately and the Green, who has a history of these incidents, will have to complete certain league and team conditions before he's allowed back on the court. Green was last suspended five games in November for putting T-Wolf center Rudy Gobert in a headlock as you take a look at his career suspensions. Prior to this indefinite suspension, Draymond Green suspended nine games in his career, and he has had quite the laundry list of issues and violations in the NBA. He hit LeBron in the groin. He punched his own teammate. He stepped on Demonis Sabonis. He put Rudy Gobert in a headlock. He got suspended five games for that. Then on Tuesday, he strikes Yusuf Nurkic, now suspended indefinitely. And for once, welcome in CBS Sports NBA writer Colin Ward-Henninger, who covers the Golden State Warriors exclusively for CBSSports.com as well as the rest of the NBA. But this is his focus, this team, and what he has seen from Draymond Green. He has been around these in these instances, these situations. Colin, this is this is unprecedented for Draymond Green being suspended indefinitely. Your reaction is what? I mean, indefinite was definitely not expected, but something very large and something very meaningful was definitely expected after Draymond Green's incident with Yusuf Nurkic. Look, the league has been signaling this uh, for a very long time. The incident where he stepped on DeMontis Sabonis, uh, the league, Joe Dumars, cited precedent of his previous actions. Once again, when he choked Rudy Gobert, they said this has to do with his previous history, his previous acts that he has committed. So for him to do this this quickly after coming back from a suspension and, and you know you could you can say that the Rudy Gobert one he was you know in theory going to protect his teammates sure this one it was completely reckless it, it put Yusuf Nurkic in danger and I think the league simply said look one of these times somebody is going to get seriously hurt if we don't do something about this right now so uh, the indefinite suspension is you know uh, according to the league to give him time to receive counseling uh, to figure out what's going on with him dating back to the Jordan pool punch all the way through this season uh, there's certainly been something going on with Draymond Green whether it's it's mental it, it's physical it's, it's whatever's going on with him the league feels that he needs to address that before it's safe to put him back on a basketball court I, I guess I'm surprised that he didn't learn his lesson after the five game suspension I, I would think that's what Adam Silver is thinking as well and, and we can't get in the inside the head of Adam Silver right now but, but I guess if, if you've already handed out a five-game suspension, then a month later, we're talking about another suspension for another on-court violation, another on-court incident. At what point, at what point does he learn? Be, be, I mean, not, he's going to learn now with the indefinite suspension, and, and we'll wait to hear because I guess my question to you, do, you, do we think this is going to be indefinite? We say the word indefinite, but does that mean the rest of the season? Does that mean... 30 games but I mean, what are we talking here are we really seriously talking in depth like we talk the rest of the year yeah I mean the reports are that they, they put the indefinite tag on it because they didn't want to set a number of games they want him to meet a certain uh, you know number of criteria that they put forth we mentioned the counseling he's going to be going to there's going to be other parameters set by the team and by the league uh, kind of similar to what we've seen with John Morant where you know these repeated incidents after uh, you know uh, the John Morant's other incident happened uh, before like not too far after his, his incident before that so I think this is kind of a similar situation where the league said look we can keep giving this guy five game suspensions we can give him a 10 game suspension but until he changes something until uh, he feels a true impact uh, of what's going on here he's not going to change his behavior so I think the indefinite tag is, is to not say hey after 30 games Draymond you're good to get back on the court it's look you may never get back on the court if you don't meet the criteria that we set and we don't feel that it's safe to put you on the basketball court so I, I think that's where the indefinite uh, suspension came from but again this is not something that we see in the NBA very often if at all look this is a, a decorated player right a defensive player of the year a four-time NBA uh, champion, uh, 33 years old, who's played on 
phenomenal teams throughout the history of the NBA at Golden State with Steph Curry and Klay Thompson getting to play alongside Kevin Durant. We know that he and Kevin Durant got into scuffles, yelling each other in the huddles. We saw that. We, we know about his polarizing attitude. And I'm curious because we have not talked about this, but Rasheed Wallace recently came out and said that that 4 Pistons team was to blame for Draymond's behavior, which at some point you have to see if you're Draymond, you got to take ownership, you got to take accountability. You're a 33 year old grown, you know what, man, and you're still doing this stuff. Yeah, and that's exactly what you sense from his teammates. I mean, being around this locker room, uh, whenever you ask them about Draymond's suspension, the shoulders sulk, there's a sigh. Hey, you know, he, he tries to walk that fine line. Like, we need him to have the edge. We need him to have the energy. But he needs to know when to bring it back in, when to reel it in. You hear that from Steve Kerr. You hear that from Steph Curry. You hear that from Klay Thompson. You hear that from everyone who's been around this organization. And it's the same song over and over and over. When he's on the court and engaged, he is phenomenal. He is what makes this team go alongside Steph Curry. Uh, but he is not helping his team when he's not on the court because he's suspended or he's doing flagrant fouls or wh whatever the case may be. So uh, for Draymond Green, really, I mean, we heard Bob Myers talk about this. Uh, you know, he, he was the Warriors GM for the last, you know, 10, 12 years before this season. Uh, he, he said on the record that, in Draymond's cases where he would have these kind of disturbances, you mentioned the Kevin Durant argument, uh, obviously what happened with Jordan Poole, things like that. Bob Meyer said he would go to Steph Curry and say, hey man, what do you want me to do? And over and over again, Steph Curry would say, we need Draymond, Draymond Green on the court. We need Draymond Green to win. And so Bob Myers would say, all right, we're bringing Draymond back. Now is the time where you have to look at this and say, look, the Warriors are 10 and 13, whatever they are. They're off to a really bad start. There's kind of this shift where the old guard is leaving. There's younger players coming in. Is this the time when Steph Curry finally looks at Mike Dunleavy Jr., the GM, looks at ownership and says, hey, maybe it's time to start looking at other places for Draymond Green. It's going to be difficult with that contract that he's on and obviously this history of his behavior. But is this time for the Warriors to move on from Draymond Green completely? Mm, that's uh, – that's, uh, and look, he just – he, did, he just signed a contract. So, I mean, that, then you're getting into a sticky situation there. Uh, because, look, he's a disruptor, right? I mean, Draymond Green is a disruptor. When he's on the floor, he disrupts play. He, he is a guy that, you, even if you don't like him, you'd want him on your favorite NBA team because he, he does sometimes the, quote, dirty things, and sometimes he does actual dirty things, as we've seen play out throughout his career, getting suspended. So, at, at, at this point, indefinite, to me, it sounds like he's got to show the NBA with the team conditions. He's got to show the NBA sort of the good behavior, right? He's got to show through examples, through perhaps counseling, through uh, some training that he's ready to return, and then maybe that will be lifted. I'm not going to speculate here, but that's what it sounds like is sort of if he shows he can be a player in the NBA that's going to be respectful toward other players, that Adam Silver will welcome back. That, that's what it sounds like to me here, but I, I'm curious what you think about that. Yeah, it's such a hard decision to make. When is somebody ready to come back? When has somebody truly changed? Uh, at a certain point, you are what your behavior says you are, and I think that's what the NBA is saying with this suspension is that we've seen enough. Uh, you can continue to say, oh, I'm going to change, or, oh, I, you know, that I didn't mean that. It was, it was unintentional. Uh, but eventually, if you keep doing this over and over and over, the NBA is the one that looks bad if, if they continue to leave you on the court. So, um, when are these conditions going to be met? Is, is it going to be a certain number of counseling sessions? Are they going to be uh, speaking in concert with the people he's working with to see if he's making true change? It's a very difficult thing to assess somebody's psychology, somebody's mentality. Uh, until we get him back on a basketball court and see if he continues to do these things, it's going to be very hard to understand whether he's met these conditions. So um, I believe that it, it's going to be a while. I, I can't imagine that he's going to be back on the court anytime soon. Uh, I think that this is going to take a, a long process of speaking with people, of speaking with Draymond, of speaking with people that are close around him to try to decide if and when he is truly changed and is ready to get back on the court. Colin Ward Henninger with the latest here on CBS Sports HQ. Draymond Green suspended indefinitely for what he did on Tuesday night to Phoenix's Yusuf Nurkic. Colin Ward Henninger, we appreciate it. Thanks, Colin.
And here's a look at the upcoming schedule for Golden State 10 and 13 right now in the Western Conference sitting outside of the play in picture. And of course, we're far from the season being over. We're uh, early in the season here, 20, 25 games in. Um, but not having Draymond Green, you saw how that affected Golden State on Tuesday night, rest of way against Phoenix. Uh, the, uh, the Warriors went on to lose that game as Devin Booker had a big game and, and finished strong there. But for Draymond Green, his sixth suspension in the NBA. Prior to this, it was nine games total. Now looking at an indefinite suspension as he is suspended for his actions on Tuesday night.